It's time for Monday Evening Driver with Jeremiah and Fish on Highway 106 and 1023. That's a lane no one could do anything with earlier this afternoon. Now it's working. That's the fast lane. Johnson gets turned. Bain goes around. Busher is in the outside wall. It's the crash down. Crash down. Coming up. He's coming up. Coming up. Better, better. It is 5.05 on Monday afternoon on the New River Building Supply Afternoon Show, and you know what that means. It's time for Monday Evening Driver, where we bring in host of the All Request Short Order Lunch, Brian Fisher, with us to talk a little NASCAR. So let's welcome him in. Hey, Fish. Man, what did you think about some all-star racing over I, the weekend? I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> that was probably one of the best all-star races I've seen in quite some time, yeah, Fish. Yeah. Quite some time. It was, man. It was exciting. I think uh, I read a statistic that uh, this race with the rules package that we had under the green flag we saw 38 uh different passes uh, how about the that? track compared to last year you know how many they had last year <laughs> how many zero None. oh my goodness zero passes under the green flag last year the all-star race had 38 this year so i think I think NASCAR is on to something, and it's pretty exciting from what we saw on Saturday night. Well, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence because there's no doubt that that created way better racing than we're used to seeing in a mile and a half. Yeah. And I like the fact that even though it was restrictor plates, you could still get out and pass somebody by yourself. You yeah. didn't necessarily have to be running with somebody. But then on the other hand, I'm like, just the the idea of restrictor plates in racing just bothers me a little bit yeah. because. It makes everybody the same, and you saw Saturday night there was no lifting. There was they were in the throttle the whole time, and it does create that pack racing, and it takes away a little bit of the ingenuity of the team. So, if they could find like a real nice balance between that, I think they'd be in the perfect spot. It it does, but I mean, I you know you still saw the domination from a couple of teams out there. Yeah, Kevin yeah. Harvick took home the win. Mm -hmm. I mean, he led the the final ten laps of the stage. Yeah. Uh, and he got out there in clean air, and you couldn't track him down. You had so much racing that was going on behind him that uh, he, he jumped out and was able to dominate. So you, you still see kind of flashes of, of the current state of NASCAR uh, with that. I mean, Kevin Harvick was fast all night long. He drove from mid-pack uh, to get yeah. that win after a big push on that final restart from Joey Logano. Uh, it still made things interesting, though, throughout the field. And it seems like NASCAR is is at least keeping open to the idea of running at it more places. Marcus Smith said last night about, you know, hey, would you run it at the Coke 600 in, in future years? He said, why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, you know what's going to happen at the Coke 600 yeah. Sunday night fish. <laughs> Somebody's going to get out in clean air first churn and check out and it's be three be cars on the lead lap at the end of the race and uh, steve o'donnell said well steve o'donnell was re reading an article that, that uh he was talking about you know somebody asked him if if this package could pop up before the end of the year and he said never say never yeah. so uh who, who knows that, when it when you, it'll come you know where i think it can definitely be used is places like pocono oh my goodness yeah. pocono could use it yeah. michigan um, you know, some of the mile and a half so definitely. Indy, I mean, Indy, Indy yes. Indy would be a good good track. We saw that with the Xfinity Series. so It would. So you picked uh, Ryan Blaney, who finished yep. 15th. He really ran uh, better than that. Uh, so the average place of your finishes for your picks is 9.3. I picked Keselowski, who got involved in a wreck. He finished 20th. I'm down to 6.9. Yeah, they had a big. They had the big one at Charlotte. They did. Well, wasn't it nice to see some wrecks at Charlotte? <laughs> Four what wide. Was that? Yeah. Four wide racing. Yeah, that'll, that'll produce it. And you know, that's 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 part of this rules package. So. Well, we stay in Charlotte this weekend for the legendary Coca-Cola 600. You'll hear it Sunday on the highway, courtesy of the Performance Racing Network. It's a 5 o'clock airtime, 6 o'clock green flag. Fish, this is the longest race of the year. It's a grueling race. Uh, you got to have good equipment, and you got to have a driver who stays focused, who pulls in the victory lane. I think uh, I think Ford's really going to show up and, and dominate just like they have all season. I think Martin Truex is going to be fast. A couple of those Toyotas will be yeah. fast. I'm going to go, though. Kevin Harvick obviously is the popular pick. Sure. Um, but with these, these longer races, uh, his pit crew kind of seems to become involved <laughs> a little bit too much. Uh, I'm going to go with the highest place in Ford of last year. Of course, uh, we saw Chevrolet Austin Dillon win it last yep. year. Uh, Kurt Busch, though, was really fast last year. Uh, all the Stewart Haas Fords are fast. We're going to say the 41 win.
You know, he won back there in uh, 2010, looks like, in a Dodge. It, back when he was driving the Blue Deuce before Keselowski yeah. took yeah. over. So he knows how to, you know, manage himself and his energy over 600 mm -hmm. miles. Uh, you mentioned Austin Dillon won it last year. I like I like Clint Boyer. I'm not going to pick him, but I like him. Yeah. He's won this race back in 2012, another Ford. But I'm, I'm not going to go so ho-hum as to pick Kevin Harvick, but I am going to pick Martin Truex Jr. He yeah. won the fall race last year. And remember, uh, back in 2016, he absolutely dominated the 600, leading an amazing amount of laps. Uh, he knows how to get around a mile and a half. Yeah, it was a lot. This, this is one of my favorite weekends in motorsports. You got the Indy 500. You got to the Formula One, big Formula One race early, and then you got the Coca-Cola 600. The greatest day in racing this weekend. Yeah. I'm looking forward to and, it. And you know, I'm going to do the double this weekend. Are you really? Yeah. You're going to yeah. do the double? I'm going to have a sweet tea in one hand and a Diet Mountain Dew in the oh, other. Oh, okay. The double. Okay, there you go. Oh, and Did Big shout out, by the way, to another race winner, Justify. He won the Preakness, so he's going oh, okay. on to the Belmont Stakes for the Triple Crown in three weeks. Is he the Kevin Harvick of, <laughs> of, of the horse world this year? There's not as much complaining in horse races. <laughs> That's true, yeah. You're right about that. Well, Fish, thanks for joining us. You'll catch him tomorrow from 11 to 2. This has been Monday Evening Driver on the New River Building Supply Afternoon Show.